I'm going to begin with Floyd because there's a bit of an I told you so here, right? I am the one that told you guys this was fishy from the beginning. I did predict for you that Floyd was going to be the one getting the wool pulled over his eyes. That's true. This was a bit of the double-double cross, if you will. I'm assuming you guys have seen Floyd's fight. You've at least read about it or seen some clips. I'm assuming. If you didn't, maybe I should back up. Floyd went out and did a work. In Japan, he fought on New Year's Eve. A uh, Japanese fighter who had was 20 years old. Big part of the storyline was this guy's youth. He was 20 years old. They kept making a big thing about him being 20 years old. But a great kickboxer. A very skilled and decorated kickboxer. Maybe even a champion kickboxer. I don't know that for sure. But undefeated, great fighter. And I thought they were going to bring Floyd out there and rob him. Right? Put their own guy over who they got under contract and steal this from Floyd. They made it nine minutes, three threes, so amateur time rules. And Floyd just never seemed into this thing. I mean, from the jump, the media was weird, and you're hearing that it's called an exhibition, and then you get the promoter to come out and go, oh, no, we're lost in translation there. That's an American term. Exhibition over here just means, you know, a, an extravaganza, a specialty, an exhibition fight, not a sparring session. But Floyd had represented to the media that it was just that. It was a sparring session. So everything was very goofy from the beginning. And we all, trying to be the smart marks in the room, we're trying to make the prediction based on logic. What happened was so many people started to catch on, so many people wanted to be able to predict the outcome, that they then double-crossed the double-cross, and they made the Japanese guy do the job. So, I mean, this thing was really weird. Just by example, okay, if you guys, st- I happen to stay up, but I'm a nighttime guy. But this fight didn't happen. I mean, the whole show was like eight hours. It was painfully long. And all I'm doing is reading along. I'm reading the play-by-play at bloodyelbow.com. So, I mean, this thing takes forever. It didn't even start until 1 a.m. Eastern. So it's this never-ending show, and then when they finally get to the main event, which which by now, I mean, you're ready to fade to black and roll the credits as a viewer, but you then have to wait because Floyd has not arrived at the arena. Floyd is an hour late. Nobody knows if the fight's even going to happen. So now this, everybody knows it's going to be a very fishy ending to the fight. That was very clear that this was not a straight-up boxing contest or exchange of any kind. But now you're wondering, oh, is that the big swerve? Is Floyd doesn't show up? I guess we got to reschedule. Ha ha. Thanks, everybody, for buying. What was weird about that is Floyd was there. Floyd was there the whole time. I I can completely confirm that for you. But the the whole story that Floyd was late was just very weird to put out in the first place because now you're make-believing like Floyd's out with other things to do. Floyd doesn't have a car. He's in Japan. The promoter picks him up. He didn't have any of those. He couldn't show up late if he wanted to. He's got to get in the car when the promoter pulls up to the hotel. Plus, he was there. I I, I knew people that were there. Floyd Floyd was in the arena. So that part of the story was weird because then they did make the viewer and the audience and the in-house audience wait an hour with this fagazi tale of Floyd not being there. Okay, fine. So the fight starts, and you know, right off the bat, just going back to knowing and being able to predict for you guys ahead of time that this wasn't straight up. Let's just look at it a little, little bit closer. Okay. One of the things that Floyd was very worried about when he fought Connor, and he was playing it like I'm not worried about anything, but one of the things that he did speak on that concerned him was Connor's age. Connor was 27 years old and Floyd was 40 years old. And he did speak about that. And in this case, and he took Connor very seriously. Full training camp, locked himself down in Vegas, brought the people in, spent the money, two sessions a day, every day in the gym did the build-up, did the media, but he trained and prepared, and you could see that. You could see that within his body. You could see that when he was on the scale. You could see that within the duration of the bout going almost a half hour. He took a 27-year-old Conor McGregor who had never done stand-up fighting before very seriously. He did not take a 20-year-old kickboxing champion, an undefeated athlete in this realm. He took Conor seriously, who'd never done it before. But he wasn't taking a guy even younger than Connor, who actually did this and did this at a high level to the point of championships with any kind of seriousness. Right there was a big clue that, okay, the fix is already in. Why prepare for a match if you don't have a match? So he comes out. He's fooling around. He wears some mask. He's he's joking around with his corner. and, And then when the actual fight starts, he's smiling at this guy. At one point, he drops his hands. 
He never smiled at Conor McGregor, and he never dropped his hands once. And you wouldn't. It wouldn't matter how much better you are than another guy. If you're a trained competitor in combat, you bring those skills in. The guy could be terrible or the guy could be great. You are trained in a specific way to go out there and compete. Floyd didn't do that. He's smiling. He drops his hands. He's daring the guy to hit him while he's within range. Very similar to the way Floyd behaved at WrestleMania a number of years ago when he took on The Big Show. And it was very similar body mechanics and language for the same reason. This was wrestling. Floyd throws a body shot that may or may not have touched his opponent. I've watched it a few times. I couldn't even tell if he made contact. The guy goes down. The guy goes down a total of three times inside of two minutes. Conor McGregor, Conor McGregor went down zero times. In 30 minutes. Just to put it in perspective for you. If you'll also remember the Conor McGregor fight, there was a huge to-do about the gloves. The gloves that they were going to wear. No Mexican-made gloves. No horsehair-made gloves. Specific amount of... All this inspection on the gloves. Conor McGregor could not have possibly cared less. Did not negotiate. Did not send a team in. Just send it over to me and I'll sign it. And then he talked about why. So guys, I in my entire life, I've never checked to see where a glove was made. I don't, what do I give a damn if they're made in Mexico? I have no idea where they are made. And I didn't even know what they put in gloves, let alone horse hair. So these were very important things to Floyd and his camp. And we know that and we have evidence of that. In this fight, there was no talk of it. And they did it in eight-ounce gloves, which is the last thing Floyd was willing to do in the Conor McGregor fight. Conor McGregor, who had no experience. Floyd was taken on a guy with much more experience and let him have the glove choice. I mean, look, the whole thing, it was just weird and it was fugazi and I don't fully understand it, but Japan is different. That's a piece of the psychology. Uh, Errol Hawani weighed on this. He also thought it was a fugazi and worked fight. He's just saying, but man, I can't make sense of this because you let Floyd go over. That's not the way you would do a work. That's true by North American psychological standards. In Japan, it's not about the outcome. It's about the experience. They will applaud one of their own for having gone in and tried, for having had that experience, for having been in there with Floyd. It's just a totally different mindset. But ultimately, it ended in the double, double cross.